So we are live today on June the 16th, 2022, and we've got a great group today. And uh, my name is Keelan Johnson. I am the sales manager here in Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Kansas, and Colorado. <clears throat> so I'm glad to, I've been with the company 2000, since 2016. I've been in the insurance business. Hopefully you can see this down here. I believe I'm sharing my screen. So uh, I believe you're good to go on that one. Uh, I've been in the business here for 22 years. So type yes in your box, in your chat box, if you can see my screen. And that way we'll know that we everybody can see it. So if you can see my screen, if you can hear me clearly, <clears throat> somebody would please type yes in your chat box. And that way I know I'm not speaking to myself. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Um, so 22 years, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> in the PNC world, in the in the financial world, and in the insurance world, and so uh, now I've been with the company going on, uh, you know, six years now. So um, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do, and I love to see people uh, become protected, and I love to see agents be successful at protecting people. So we've got some new people on the line, and we've got some tenured people on the line. And uh, I won't keep you too long today, but I just wanted to make sure, and I try to do this every month and a half or two, just wanted to kind of make sure that everybody knows how to process an online web application and the differences in the two. You know, I, um, we have agents now that, uh, uh, you know, have been doing paper for a while, and now they're trying to transition maybe to web or some people that do web app uh, through the computer and maybe still want to do paper. So just know that if you look at my training website, which I want to rehash again, write this down, top left corner, you can see finalexpenselife.us. So finalexpenselife.us right here in the top left. So if you look at that website, that is my training website. And uh, hopefully you're able to, uh, to, to see it. Hopefully you're able to, to write it down. So I'm excited about that. And this is kind of like your toolbox, okay? This is your toolbox where you work in. So if you were to work on a car, you're gonna work on a house, whatever you're gonna work on, you would work in here uh, through this. So write it down, save it to your computer, save it to your home screen, save it to your phone. Because when I reference, and if you ask me a question about where is something, this is typically where I go. And most of the time, your answer to your question will be into in this area. So for brand new people also, my how-to, my weekly recorded trainings, uh, if you've missed a few trainings or if you're brand new, go in here and watch some of these. These are my, my mine from the past weeks, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, one month ago. Had a great one two weeks ago with top producers, Sean Miller and Travis Robinson. Uh, three weeks ago, completing a paper application. Uh, four weeks ago, how to present the product. Uh, then a new agent training. Okay, some really good, I try to repeat the videos about every month and a half just to keep the blood flowing for current people and to teach new people. So jump in there, subscribe to my channel and you'll see the videos pop up and you'll be able to watch them. So down in the tools section, I want you need to probably a little bit of homework if you haven't done it already, go play around in here. Open, I challenge you just to open up each one of these tabs and look at it. Just open up the tab and look at it. And you're gonna get a lot of information just by doing that exercise. For example, if you open this one up, you're gonna see that we've got three, four policies here at Security National Life. This is our core product, ages 40 to 90, simple security plan. We have our security care plan, ages zero to 40 here. We have our MIB plan, ages zero to 85. And then we have an eye care plan, which is our ages 25 to 55, okay? So, um, Take a look at these and they will help you out tremendously. Uh, when you also, you've got several other good tools here to look at our height and weight chart. I'm gonna be releasing a new height and weight chart also probably today or tomorrow, which is really exciting. So we have a little bit more leniency on the height and weight. So that's exciting too, as we move forward uh, and as we try to protect people, you know, uh, going forward. So I'm excited about that. Asking for referrals, your medications list, um, how to new appointment settings and objections. So this is a good one for brand new people. It's got some good information in here uh, that comes from the company as to overcoming objections, uh, maybe a voicemail script. 
uh, maybe a text script that you want to text people, maybe an email script that you want to email people. Okay, maybe a little tools here that you might not be using right now that may be helpful in your career in the final expense industry as we move forward. Okay, so take a look at those uh, door knocking uh, and some objections. Those are good too. So those are from the company. Who can we write illustration of coverage for brand new people? Check out this illustration of coverage. I'm not going to dive into it too much today, but you are sitting in an opportunity to write a heck of a product. We are a great whole life product, a great whole life policy. As you can well see in here, it gains a lot of cash value. Uh, it's got great benefits. It's got a paid up benefit and some loan values. So even for younger people, uh, you're not just writing a term policy or a policy that's that's going to go up in the future because we are a policy that's always one premium, one face amount, and it never changes. So you can rest assured at night that your clients are getting a good, solid coverage. Okay, You're the insurance professional. You're the one that has to relay this to them, how good this is and how awesome this product is that backs a good opportunity to make sure that your family is protected, make sure your family's protected. Okay, so take a look at that. Um, state applications, if you need some, you know, shortcut to get your state applications, check those out there. Beating the lead, I'm, I'm probably going to do a, a, another training next week on this, but in a helicopter approach, in a summary approach, this is, uh, this is really crucial these days. Um, how, how do we contact the customer? How does the customer want to be contacted? Do they want to be called? Do they want to be seen face to face? Do they want to be texted or do they want to be emailed? We as professional agents have to make sure that we know, okay, that we know uh, which, what we're looking at, okay? And we know, I hope y'all can see the screen. Uh, I believe you can. Type yes if you can see the screen because I had someone say, how do I see the meeting? So type yes if you can see my screen when I'm toggling back and forth over here. I just don't want to be talking to the screen. I want to make sure. And sometimes uh, you're sharing your screen. Okay, I believe I am sharing my screen. So, okay, thank you, Paul. I just have to check it every once in a while because if I lose signal, then I have to come back to it. Well, we got to be sure we communicate with the client the way that they want to be communicated with the way that they want to be communicated with. We have to communicate with the client, okay? So whether that's by text, whether that's by phone, whether that's by email, or whether that's by person, that's very important that we do that, okay? Um, and then down here, you know, again, when you want to go buy leads and you want to get ready to buy ordering leads, then we need to talk about that. What type of leads do you want? And where do we need to buy them from? Contact the company and then contact me. But as long as you have my training website, the final expense life.us on here, then you're able to access any of these things and any of these. So you saw a, uh, an email go out today. I sent out to quite a few agents about producing. And, uh, you know, we are, we are adamant about having agents that want to produce and want to write policies. Um, you know, we are a company that wants to grow and, and be, get bigger and we don't ask much. You know, you see my, you see my emails that go out and they say two plus policies. That's a good goal. That I would like to see everybody that is an agent write at least two policies a month. And that puts some money in your hand. That puts good uh, premium in your hand. That makes sure you're still protecting families and that you're using us and we're able to count on you, uh, you know, month in and month out. I do know that some of y'all, if not most of you, have other things going on as far as maybe other products or, or Medicare or or health or PNC, I do understand that. But please just try to make a commitment to me because I make a commitment to you uh, to be there for you when you need me. Um, so just make a commitment to me that you're gonna use this. And because here's the thing, in a 30 day period, a 31 day period, even if you're not buying leads, if you're just working, you know, your natural markets and natural people, uh, if, you're, if you're handing out business cards and you're talking to people and you're telling them what you do, you should be able to, to find a couple of people to go protect. Um, and that's, you know, and so I'm not saying that's a dead stop rule. You have to, but, and then, you know, moving forward, 
you know, with us, we want to see people that are going to use us. Um, and so when I bring an agent on board and the, my boss looks at me and they've been with us for eight months and never written a policy, then he kind of looks at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What have you done for these people? So anyways, uh, please just help me and we'll, we'll work together on that for sure. And protect some families because this is a great opportunity. Great opportunity. So today I want to talk about writing a web app. Um, as you well know, in the past, before COVID, I'm going to check, I'm going to toggle back here and check my, my questions. As you well know, before COVID, we were a um, in-person policy writing company only. So you had to go see the people. You had to sit down with them. You had to take a paper application. You had to write the policy. You had to scan it in and then you had to send it to the company. We still have that process, okay? And a lot of people still use it. They scan in policies and send it straight to the company. And that's, that's a way that you can do it by taking the paper application. And if you've never done that or haven't seen it, go watch my how to present a paper application from last week or the week before. And then you take your paper application and you go simply over here to the upload button and you can either scan it in to your computer and find it there or you can take a picture of it with your phone, take a picture of it with your phone and send it to the, to the company, okay? So two ways, two ways to do that. So send it in by your phone, because if you have this, if you have this screen, and if you have your agent portal downloaded on your phone, which if you, have, if you need some help doing that, let me know, I can help you. Then you can simply just go over there, put your camera on top, shoot a button, shoot a picture of it and send it straight to the company. Okay. So that's how you send a paper application to the company through this upload button right here. And it will go in there and it will go into your policy progress. And then you can check it out and look at it. Okay. But today we're going to talk about how to complete an application through the internet or through the web. And this application would apply to no matter if you're with the person which you can, you can be with the person uh, or over the phone. So it's basically taking what you would do on a piece of paper and putting it through the internet uh, on through a web application, okay, through a web application. So that's, it's two different things there. So either on the phone or in person. So today we're gonna be running through how to do an application over the phone, okay? So we're gonna run through that. So I'm gonna need probably a volunteer. If I can get a volunteer real quick to maybe unmute themselves and I will just do a kind of a fake application on that person, okay? So we can, we can work together. So if someone wants to unmute themselves, I'd be glad to, to work with you. I'm gonna give it a second, see who is brave enough to work. I know I've got 16 of y'all on here, somebody, is brave enough to unmute themselves. Because I know we're in the insurance business and everybody talks. All right, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, come on. I see Terry, I see Paul, I see Terrence. Okay, I'll do it, Keelan. Oh, there he is, I knew you would. So uh, thank you, Paul, appreciate you. Um, Paul is an, an agent down in uh, the Houston area, right, Paul? Yeah, in Katy, just outside Houston. Just outside of Katy. And so uh, Paul is one of our career agents and doing a great job for us. So thanks for jumping on here uh, and uh, being my guinea pig today. So uh, we're going to do a web application here. And any of the information you want to keep anonymous, then just make it up. So we'll just uh, we'll go through here and make it make up some information and, and do a web application. So um, So again, let me just reiterate this. When you're doing the web application, it can be either over the phone from 200 miles away, or it can be in the house from 10 feet away. It doesn't matter. It's just you are there with the client in their home, or you're over the phone with them and you're talking to them. So either way. So, so Paul, appreciate you being here with me today. And if I misspell your words or anything, your name, then please just uh, forgive me because I'm going fast with this. But uh, 
Uh, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, get a little bit of information, and we'll be we'll be off to the races. We'll call the company and do an authorization. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Perfect. So, Paul, uh, I know your name here, and I know your your date of birth is five five nineteen seventy four, right? So, oh, uh, <laughs> we're in the state of Texas, right? Writing this application, Paul. You're down there in Katy. All good. And. Yes. Uh, Katie, zip code. What's the zip code there? Uh, 77450. Okay. All right. That's going to be anonymous. So, Paul, uh, how tall are you and how much do you weigh? Um, six foot zero, 190. 190. All right. Perfect. So, this is important right here, everybody. It's 190. What's that? 190. Oh, 190. Okay. So uh, I thought that was a little low, but I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> uh, um, so this is important right here for everybody on the line. And the reason is that the, the only policy that we write or the policy that we write on the web app is the simple security plan. So you got to make sure that they fall within the height and weight category of the simple security plan. Okay. So it's very important that, uh, that that happens in here so that you get it right. And we're going to write a policy for $15,000 a day. Now, one thing to know on this is that when you're doing the web application, you want to make sure that the client is al already kind of committed to you. And the reason is this. You see this secure button up here? If you're in the middle of a sale and you're in the middle of a presentation and you're filling this out and you sit around for a little bit, you know, 15 minutes or whatever, and you don't touch your screen, there could be a chance that this does time out and this will make you start back over. What? I always suggest something. I always suggest to have a paper application out to your side of your computer. And to some degree, fill out that paper application while you're doing this web app because if you have to go back and if it times out you if you have that paper application there at least you have their information there sitting beside you okay and at least you have that information sitting beside you where you can see it and then you can just go back and say hey, i'm sorry my computer timed out the other thing too is make sure you have good internet access okay because if you get out in the field and you're trying to fill this out and you're in somebody's house, they go, yeah, I got internet. The password is two, three, four, five, you know, whatever. You don't know if that internet access is going to be really good or not. <clears throat> so it could, it could ruin some information there. Okay, so I'm just going to put some bogus stuff in here. One, two, four, Maine, just for that purpose. Katy, Texas. And uh, hey, Paul, where were you born at? Um, it'll be outside of the U.S. I think it's right at the very bottom of the list. Okay. Yep, outside of USA. So we've got that there. Okay, and so I know, already know Paul's phone number because I'll have him on the line. So just go ahead and fill that out for the person. Now, on the email address, you're going to want to do this. If they don't have an email address, just put none at none.com. That means nothing. Now, if they do have an email address, and the only time we would use it is if we needed correspondence to that client. So if they have one and they want to put it there, fine. So here's what's cool. You see this toggle over here. If Paul is his own owner, if Paul is going to be the owner of his own policy, then you toggle this over and put Paul. It pre-fills everything. So don't ever try to just duplicate what's up there because you've already done it once. All you got to do is go over here and pre-fill it twice. If the owner is different, like if I were to own Paul's policy, then it would be me. Same thing goes with the payor, okay? Same thing goes with the payor. So the payor is here. Click over here and you've got your, pay, your, your payor right there, okay? So while I'm doing this, I want you to do something, please, for me after we get off the line here. Find your web app and go play with it. Put something in there yourself or write your own policy. I mean, I think every single agent, if they're going to write with us, should own their own policy just because they can say they've got one. You can show them your illustration. You can show them the policy jacket. You can show them anything that, you know, that they have right there. Okay, so it's very important. 
uh, beneficiaries right here. So we're going to add a beneficiary. So if you want to add a beneficiary, Paul is going to make me his beneficiary. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have as many beneficiaries as you want, excuse me. Um, and it will just split them up. So none, just for time purposes, none.com and relationship to, to Paul is, uh, I'm other. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Other, I'm a friend. There we go. So you can have all kinds of relationships here from domestic partner, grandchild, grandchildren, parent, whatever. Um, and then primary. So if you have two primaries, put two of them in there, and it will split it up 50-50, okay? So use your beneficiary. So, Paul, I'm going to ask you a few questions here. I'm going to run through them, okay? I'm going to kind of summarize them. So you as an agent, this is why this is important. You as an agent uh, need to know that um, when you go through this, it's going to be kind of a daunting deal. Let me go over and check my questions over here. It's going to be kind of a daunting deal if you sit here and go, Paul, are you now or within the past 30 days been treated or admitted in a hospital, nursing home, health, everything, to the bed, kind of, I mean, it just, it just, it's just tough. Okay. So, I challenge you to know what the application is asking so that you can shortcut a little bit. I'm not saying shortcut it at all and don't ask it. I'm saying shortcut it a little bit. So it makes it a little smoother, such as this. Paul, I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. All right. You can answer yes or no. Do you use tobacco? No. Okay. This, in a sec this question, have you stayed in the hospital overnight in the last 30 days? No. In the last 30 days, have you had a seizure? No. Do you need any assistance with the daily activities of life, eating, drinking, dressing? No. Okay. Have you been treated for cancer in the last 90 days? No. Have you ever been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, dementia, sickle cell anemia, hepatitis C, cirrhosis, cystic fibrosis, brain aneurysm, or organ transplant? No. Are you receiving dialysis? No. Uh, have you been diagnosed with HIV? No. Okay. So see how I went through those? So I'm looking for key words. Hospital 30 days, seizure 30 days, daily activities of life, uh, cancer. Okay. This is a the Alzheimer's dementia. You kind of got to go through these a second. Uh, dialysis or HIV. Okay. Or HIV. So I've got a few more now. Good news is so good news is you qualify for a plan here so far. So I'm going to ask you a couple other questions here. The section two is only about insulin. All I'm trying to do is see if he, if Paul uh, has is taking insulin and if he is, how much? Okay. So are you taking insulin? No. Okay. So if he was, he'd say yes, and I'd ask how much, and that's where I'd put it in here right now. So section two is what we call our standard policy. And if you see right down here, this, this question that has to do with diabetes on 100 units of insulin, this is where we're gonna, if he does take insulin, yes, I've got insulin, how much insulin per day? 60 units. So if you write this down as a notation. Section two is all about insulin. And the only people that are gonna go in there are insulin diabetics under 100 units under 100 units, okay, insulin diabetics under 100 units. So he's a no, so he goes right here. Good news, we're going to section three, okay? I'm gonna run through these also. So I want you to think about a person, you know, as a stick figure or so. I wish I had my drawing device on this, I would draw, but think of it as a stick figure and we're gonna talk about certain parts of their body that uh, maybe something's going on. So, um, so Paul, in the last two years, or beyond, have you ever been diagnosed or treated for anything, a heart problem, bypasses, stents, angioplasties, or valves? No. Okay. Have you ever had uh, cancer? No. Okay, so our cancer question, so take it like this. Remember, in the, the very first part, we ask about cancer also. So we ask about cancer uh, right in here in the last 90 days. So here's the deal. If, if, 
you have cancer, I mean, a client has cancer, or they've had cancer within the last 90 days, it's a knockout. If they've had cancer, but they are now cancer free, and they've been cancer free for longer than 90 days, and less than what, two years, we can write them a modify, which is cool. Also, if they've been cancer free for longer than two years, we put no right there and they can actually go preferred. So when you're thinking about cancer, we just think about this, 90 days or two years, up to 90 days is decline. That's internal cancer. That's not skin cancer. Okay, 90 days and then two years. Uh, anything wrong with your brain? Any uh, disorders <laughs> or strokes? No. Okay, anything wrong with you? Again, circulatory disorders or heart failures, heart disorders? No. Lung diseases or emphysemas or pulmonary diseases, COPD? Nope. All right, let's talk about some other things. Kidneys or liver disease, hepatitis B? No. Here's our diabetes question. If he's Now, if he's diabetic and he's taking insulin over 100 units, or one thing we run into a lot here, take notation of, is this neuropathy. So, so a lot of time we have diabetic neuropathy uh, with amputation. So this is where that would go. If that is, you know, you got, you've got a drug out there called gabapentin. And gabapentin is a drug that they use a lot for the diabetic neuropathy. Okay, so be sure you take a look at that. Uh, and all right, Parkinson's disease, uh, lupus, musculosclerosis, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, anything like that? No, sir. Paranoia, schizophrenia, or major depressive order? No. Okay. Have you been advised to have a treatment or a surgery that you haven't had? No. And uh, have you been treated in a medical facility for drugs or alcohol? No. Okay. And do you use oxygen or wheelchair hospital? No, sir. Okay. So actually oxygen is one that a lot of other companies won't write and we do. So be looking at that as an opportunity for you uh, for writing people that are on oxygen. Section here that we're getting to, uh, add the medication. This is where you're just going to go in and and type in your, your medication, lodipine, two years, reason is uh, high blood pressure, dosage, 20 milligrams, times daily, one, and we're good to go, okay? So, we got the medications here. So, just go ahead and list your medications. That's what you want to do and make sure that that's good, listing your medications. In your medication, guys, some of your computers will allow you to do this, which is pretty cool. So if you go down to your medications guide, even on your phone, you type in your medications. On this, this is uh, Microsoft Edge, I believe. But if you hit your if you hit your search bar, you can start typing in amlodipine, and it will find it for you. You go, oh, hypertension. That's only that's that's medicine for for uh, high blood pressure, and he's only taken one, so that'll be preferred. Okay, so take a look at that. Primary physician does not have to go in there. Primary physician does not have to go in there. The only time we would ever use primary physician is if we are actually um, looking the two year period back and we need to get a hold of the doctor in case of an early death situation. All right, so we've got here, we've got banking information. This is gonna be either credit card or bank. I strongly suggest for for new people, do not use debit cards. If they've got a debit card, they have a checking account. So try as hard as you can to get that information, try to get the checking account number because it's gonna stay on the books a lot longer and um, it's, it's less expensive, okay? So you can find the routing number, it's local information, it's public information, the routing number is, okay? So you can find that for sure. You just need to get the account number and help them out there, okay? So if you got the bank, Texel, uh, Federal Credit Union right there, bank address, one, two, three, Maine. You can find that too, checking account or savings account, either or. Account number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then your routing number, and that needs to be correct because it will check that on that. All right, so it's always nine digits, you should know that. Accidental death benefit rider, no and child rider. For brand new people, uh, 
accidental death benefit, I can add 15,000 on this. So if my face amount is 15,000 for Paul, I could give him $15,000 more and he would have 30,000 in the, in the, in the case of an accident. Okay. So Paul would be covered for 30,000 in the, in the situation of an accident. So you always want to ask people that, would you like to write her or some agents just automatically include that no matter what that way that no other company can come undercut them. Cause they, you know, the people say, Hey, I've got, uh, you know, I've got um, coverage here for $30,000, you know, so I've got coverage for $30,000. So always try to maybe add that billing information. Does the proposed insured receive social security? So this is very important in our business. If Paul receives social security, I'm going to put yes right here. And then a billing option is going to give me which Wednesday of the month do we want to draft out of the second, third or fourth Wednesday? Because if he is on social security, that's when they do that. Always want to make sure that we're drafting on the day that they have money in the account or drafting on the day that they have money in the account. So this is a two part question, Paul, when this policy goes into effect, do you want it to go into effect immediately? Yes, I do. Okay. And then what day is best for you to, to make the rest of your payments? Oh, the first. Okay. So here's a case in point on what Paul said. He wants it to go effective immediately, but he wants it drafted on the first of the month. So I'm going to go in here and choose July the 1st. Now, listen to me carefully here. Today is the 16th of June. We're going to send a policy to Security National tomorrow or the next day. It would probably get issued tomorrow if we send it in today. Well, it will for sure. And then that will be the 17th of the month. It will get drafted. But July the 1st is less than 30 days away. So when July the 1st rolls around, Security National will not draft that other premium because it's less than 30 days. They will actually wait till August the 1st to grab the next premium. So just know that. But let's say that Paul said, no, I don't have the money right now, which is always an option also. So here's the deal. We can write people policies and post date it 30 days out. We can post date it 30 days out. So don't ever let a client say, well, I don't wanna do a policy because I don't have the money right now. Well, we can clearly go, well, that's okay. When will you have the money? Okay. When will you have the money? When can we draft that? Okay. Okay. So it's a two part question. This is kind of a, 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 a confusing question. Do you have existing life insurance policy? So don't, don't take this as, do you have any other policy? Just take it as, are you replacing a policy? Cause this is a replacement question. Okay. So no, I'm not replacing a question because if you leave it, yes, it's going to ask you about that policy and everything. And you got to go through it all in replacement form. So I put no there. Um, and then right here, a lot of people miss this, but is the insured an immediate family member? You can write all your family policies, you know, your kids or wife or whatever, and you get paid full commission. You just get paid as earned and not advanced okay, because you get paid as earned. Okay. This insurance policy will or will not replace. I, Keelan Johnson, right here, agree on this. And this is my signature and it's in typing. You can split commissions with another agent if you want to. Okay, if you got someone that's writing it for you, blah, blah, blah. What city did we sign it in? Sign it in the city where the client's at. The city where the client is at, okay? So I did all this, I've gone through this, and now we're gonna drum roll to see if I did it all right. And in a normal circumstances where I'm not in a teaching situation, then uh, I would be able to go through this pretty quickly with the client, maybe 10 minutes. So I'm gonna hit submit. So you can do this too. You can practice on your own too and hit submit even through this screen. And it's gonna come to the next screen after it waits on my internet to be somewhat slow this morning. So it's gonna come to this next screen and tell me if I missed anything. Good, I didn't miss anything. So it's going to cut if he did miss something, it would come up in red and it would show you what you missed and show you where to go back to it. OK, so now this is my final screen. I've got my banking information there. I've got my premium, my 5235 here for Paul. OK, and this is the any additional details, which means 
If I wanted a Spanish speaking uh, authorization, this is where I would put this. Or if I had any details to talk about Paul in, that's where I'd put it. Based on the questions that I ask, I'd receive a preferred plan. Now, that's not based on the medicines because we haven't done the medicines yet. Okay, we have not done the medicines yet. Okay, so we, this would be based on just the questions that we answered. Okay, and then I would go in here and I'd hit accept. And after I hit accept, then I would come in and I call the company, okay? And I call the company on this 1855 number. Now, they are available central time from 9 a.m. to 545. Well, what happens, Keelan, if it's after that? What happens if it's after that, Keelan? Well, you'll have to call back during normal business hours, okay? You'll have to call back during normal business hours. If you, the company doesn't hear from you, then they will call the client from an 801 number. Then they will call the client from an 801 number. Okay, that next day. Okay, so very important that we that we look at that uh, or over the phone. Okay, so I finished up the web application for Paul. Paul, thank you for being my guest today. And uh, I really appreciate it on that. So I'm gonna go back in here and, and uh, cover a couple more things, but it looks like uh, that uh, we got the web application done. So here's the thing to do now. When you call the company, when you call the company and you talk to them, you wanna do a phone authorization. So I'm gonna change this up on you. I've told you in the past to do phone verification with a V, V-E-R verification. And what that does, is when you do a phone verification with a V, then they basically will order your prescriptions or order the prescriptions and they will do a script check right there on the phone. So if you have a very squeaky or clean client that doesn't have any problems, you may wanna do a phone verification. But what you probably wanna do is a phone authorization with an A. And so I'm going to go down here maybe and find a blank sheet and see if I can tell you the difference. Maybe right there. Yeah, phone authorization. So a phone authorization, if I can get over here, uh, I'm X out of this, I'm going to text. A phone authorization, that basically is no prescription check and it will go straight to the underwriter. Why is that important, Keelan? Well, here's the deal. Because we never know when you do a phone authorization and it goes to the underwriting, what if the underwriter comes back and says, oh man, I found this other medicine this or this other medicine this or this other medicine this, and they're not going to qualify for a preferred anymore. They would qualify for a modified. Okay, so then I have to go back in there and say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you are paying $50 a month. Okay, instead of, instead of um, $15,000, okay, instead of 15K, we may have to go down to, you know, 12K and keep your, keep your monthly premium at 50. But at least it gives me a chance to go back in. Whereas if at that point in time you do the phone verification, they're going to find those prescriptions uh, right then and there. And then they're going to tell you, no, it's a modified. And then you're on the phone with the people trying to go, oh, no, 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 let's take it. Oh, no, no. So what I'm trying to say is, is that this is that with a phone authorization, you at least get that time to where it goes to the underwriter and you at least get time to call the client back and make kind of a second offer. We're right here on a verification. It's going to automatically do this. Now, the cool part about it is on verification, if there's no prescriptions and you know there's not any prescriptions, you may want to do this because it's going to automatically get issued and you don't have to worry about it anymore and you know exactly what you're trying to do okay on that so phone verification versus phone authorization so you may want to take a screenshot of that and that way if you're doing a web app think about that <clears throat> at the very end and think about uh what it looks like so once you do that and once you do your authorizations then you'll go in here and you can go into your policy reports and you can look at your policies and say, hey, well, that app was received. Oh, that one wasn't. Oh, this one's under pending. This is an underwriting or wherever it's at. Now follow it through. Okay. So over the phone, okay, or over the web. I mean, over, I'm in person. I'm sorry. In person or over the phone. 
Either way you want to do it, okay? Either way you want to do it is fine, no matter what. If you're faster typer than you are writer, that's cool. Go ahead and do web apps, okay? If you're faster, you know, I like to do paper apps myself just because if I mess up, I can go fix it, okay, and send it to the company. But also I've done a lot of web apps over the phone too where somebody's in another town, okay, and somebody's in some, some other place. So I just this morning, you know, wanted to go through, I was, it looks like I don't have any questions, which is good. Hopefully that's, that's good. I uh, wanted to go through the two ways that we sell policies, okay, and the two ways you have the options. But here's the beauty of it is, Hi, hi, Kaylin. Yes. I have a question. This is Marina. And yeah. I'm sorry I haven't um, been doing anything, but I just am ready to go. And I sure. just would like to learn how to do it over the phone because I have a license uh, uh, to work in Minneapolis. And okay. I went to work for two weeks and they then, um, uh, but there's a lot of people uh, waiting for me for uh, final expense. Good. Well, this is the way, Marina, to do it as far as the as far as the process goes. Uh, the web app over the phone. Is that what you were looking for? Yes, um, but it, I have to. Uh, when I'm over the phone, uh, I just have to go through these that you teach us today, right? Yes, through the web do it, app, right do here. Do it online, not on paper, because it's not that's impressive. That's right. That's right. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly how you do it. So, uh, and if any of y'all are licensed in another state, uh, let me know which state that is and I can open that up for you. This uh, is Minnesota and, you, and I gonna, okay, um, you want me, me to email. send the uh, license, I will send it tomorrow. Okay, sounds good, okay. Thank you, Marina. So yeah, okay. that's a good question. So, so we have now, I just want everybody to be aware and I think everybody is, but I have to rehash it sometimes. No matter where the client's at, we can write them. I mean, as long as you're, uh, pointed in that state, we can ride them. So don't let that slow you down. Okay. So, well, I've hey, kept I kept you here. Question. Yeah. Question. Hey, this, this is Billy Smith. Yeah, Billy. So you said that you don't have to put a physician in. Right. Oh man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Well, that that helps a whole lot. Yeah, it helps a whole lot. The only time that we would we would need the prescript, I mean the the the, the uh, doctor's information is this: uh, in most every single policy in the world, there's a two-year contestability. So uh, if a person dies within two years uh, of a policy, the company has the right to go back and look at medical history, okay, on two-year contestability for anybody. So that's when we would use it, you know, or to need it at that point in time. But other than that, we don't need it. So don't let it hold your policy up. Yeah. Any other questions going through here? All right. Well, hey, I kept it a little short for y'all today. And uh, so just think about the web app. Think about, you know, got, you know, another 14 days to throw in a couple of policies here. Uh, we've got the contest going on right now. So look at that. Look at the contest we have going on. Take a look at it. And um it, 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 you know, it can definitely get you some more cash in your pocket. And I may be talking about that next week, but it's already started now. A contest to get yourself to beat your apps. Okay. And, and uh, so take a look at it. Let's get some policies in there. Let's go, let's go talk to people. Let's go visit. Um, you know, we, every day goes by more people pass away and we got to be there for them. We have to get out there and be there for them. Are you going to be on the front pew or the back pew? You know, where are we going to be? So, Thank you all for everything you do for us. Let's work together and let's go kick some butt. So <laughs> protect some families. Thank you all for jumping on here today and to have a great week and a weekend. And uh, we will, as I always say in Texas, adios. 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 Thank you. Bye.